a marketplace where you can buy and sell different products using cryptocurrency, a decentralized marketplace. Well, I want to dive deep into the application, look at how it works, find out if I would also buy something on OpenBazaar. So let's find out. It's a free online marketplace with no platform fees, no restrictions, and you can earn cryptocurrency by selling products on it. Now, when you first start, you have to download this app onto your computer. It is, uh, available. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Mobile application available code get hit. But I'll cover that in another video. So as soon as you've got it downloaded, you can click on open to open up the package, install it onto your so I haven't even opened it up yet. This is a completely new review. I've never used this application before. I want to see how it is as a new user starting out with an application, how easy it is to use and if the user interface is uh, friendly to new users. Let's find out. Let's find out. Click on get started. I have to uh, create a name. Quick uh, overview, um, terms of agreement, open bazaar is a network for trading goods and services directly between people, so peer to peer, using cryptocurrencies without any central organization controlling the platform. Make sure you're in accordance with and arrest blah, 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 blah. By using open bazaar, you're responsible for your own actions on the open bazaar network. So there's probably no refunding and stuff going on like that. So let's click on agree and continue. Once again, optional anonymous metrics. Um, I would prefer to click on that. Somehow, I can click on discover, probably to find many other stores that are selling products. You can trade different cryptocurrencies here. Um, okay. Books. Okay, so my first gripe is that it's a bit slow to open the different products. I don't know if it's my computer. All right, so we've got the books category open. And here you've got, for example, we can buy some gift cards, $5 um, Barnes & Noble gift cards, $100 Barnes & Noble gift cards, which you can probably buy with um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, like on RZ Cash, but other different books, probably eBooks. I'm not gonna question the, yeah, if these are legal books that you can buy they're from a publisher my guess would be it's not it's just someone that is selling a pdf that they found or a e ebook that they found very interesting so you can buy some books on here it's a bit gray market if you if you ask me i'm not 100 percent sure so for example if we go to um this person johnny blaze go to store i want to see if you um selling many different uh, marvel comics are these real Marvel comics? Ah, it's a physical item. They're selling a physical item for a few dollars. Very interesting. All right, so maybe uh, I'll take back what I just said about the the gray zone. I think if you're if the the person is selling physical items, then yeah, that's totally legit. But if he's um, selling PDFs or eBooks, then in my opinion, it's a bit of a gray zone. And um, since I'm not 100% sure that it's a publisher and the money goes to the person that wrote the book. But even if you're selling second-hand books, you're the, the money is also not going to the person that wrote the book. All right, so let's see, you've got handmade stuff that also looks interesting, or electronics. Let's click on electronics. Probably stuff that have been bought on AliExpress and that's sold on on Open Bazaar. So you've got, again, you've got some... Uh, this looks like something that is um, that would be drop shipped from AliExpress or something like that to anywhere in the world. And yeah, of course, free shipping. I think free shipping is basically the, the, the giveaway that it's a product that is drop shipped. But yeah, it's it's a viable thing, and the person gets Bitcoin in return or, or another currency in return for selling these products. And then you've got many gift cards. Probably a way that you could use to uh, launder money. Yeah, if you don't want to go for a bank and get some. Um, get some gift cards and spend some uh, cryptocurrency without withdrawing this cryptocurrency for an exchange. You could buy some gift cards and then uh, buy different products instead of going for an exchange. Not that it's something that I'm uh, suggesting that you do, but probably many people do it like that. Because the thing is, when you buy gift cards, very often the exchange rate is terrible. It's like something like 20%. What else? We've got games, animate, animate. 
I, I, I guess it's also many stuff from coming from AliExpress. I wouldn't be surprised. So maybe I recognize some stuff. So I, I, I guess that products like jewelry and so on that is obviously not handmade or not made in a factory, I guess it's coming from AliExpress. And some things, this looks actually maybe um, made by hand by Ictos Express. <laughs> Basically everything is from AliExpress in my opinion. I like the idea, in my opinion, it's a bit too slow for my taste, like clicking on different categories takes a few seconds to, to change the category, at least 10 seconds if uh, my estimates are correct, and that's way too slow for me. Way too slow. I think way too slow for other users as well. I wonder how you can uh, fund your account if, um, let's see, let's, alright, let's say I want to buy these um, colorful yo-yos, and I would like to pay Eight dollars and ninety-nine cents in um, Bitcoin or Litecoin. How can I do that? All right, let's just click on Buy Now. I want to see how easy it is to buy this product. I can select the cryptocurrency amount I'd like to use. And let's try it with Litecoin. And you've got different payment times across users. Um, I can select direct payment, send funds directly to the seller without a moderator, you could only use this option with sellers you trust. As you know with uh, blockchain payments, as soon as they are done, you cannot just reverse the payment, so there is a level of um, trust that you that have to give this um, seller that they will actually sell the item and not scam you. So that is possibly uh, one reason why people might not want to spend a lot of money if there's no escrow service. Escrow service is basically where you give the cryptocurrency to a middleman and when the good is sent and you receive it, this uh, the middleman will give you the money to the seller. So the risk is then shifted more to the seller side. So, Alright, let's say I want to do a direct payment with Litecoin. I can click on pay. Everything looks good. If yes, please proceed to the final step. I'll click on yes. And possibly what happens is uh, I'll get some um, happening. Why is it not continuing? Uh, I have to choose a new address. Let's want to see if this works. Until now, it's been pretty straightforward. It's still loading. Is there anything else that I missed? Don't see. I missed. You can also select a different moderator to um, to be as a middleman and a moderator, but they will take a fee. All right. So now. Um, I've got a QR code and the amount of Litecoin I would need to pay for this item. I can copy this um, Litecoin address to my wallet so that I can send this item. Uh, so I can, sorry, so I can send a payment to this seller. And another option would be uh, maybe use my app with a Litecoin wallet and I can scan this QR code and send the amount. So this is pretty straightforward. So my review about Open Bazaar, I think it's a, it's a good prototype uh, it seemed like it's working the there are a few downsides so the first downside is the loading speeds the loading speeds are definitely not fast enough I don't know I would prefer uh, not having an app that I would have to download to my computer maybe um, uh, having it as a website as a, similar to Aliexpress and so on because I think people don't want to install additional um, software just to be able to buy different products they want to go on to a website to buy the product, you want to go on to Amazon, you want to go on to eBay, on AliExpress, and all those websites, our websites are not applications. Now, of course, if it's uh, on your phone, then an app makes sense. But yeah, for uh, buying stuff on your desktop, I think a website would make much more sense, but it is how it is. Now, for the loading speeds of the desktop app, I think it's it's really slow. I'm not sure if it's my computer. I don't think it's my computer because I don't have the oldest computer around. Um, I'm still re running the recording software on it, so maybe that slows things down. But I think it's it's basically uh, when I selected a, a category and it looks for all the items in that category, then um, it just takes ages to find all these items. 
probably because it's a decentralized marketplace that needs to get all this information from different places. Maybe that makes it slower. One other thing that I think is a bit, um, yeah, it's 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 maybe not the best is um, how the e-score works or how the trust works on this marketplace. So basically, when you're using cryptocurrencies to buy things, it's very difficult to reverse a transaction. It's basically impossible to reverse a transaction as soon as you send it to someone else. And unless you use escrow, you will have to have a lot of trust in uh, a seller that is going to provide the service that is offering. So yeah, there's there's a high amount of trust that is um, required for using a decentralized marketplace running on cryptocurrencies. If you go look at Amazon, what their service is, is basically they're offering a platform where you can buy products. And if you're not satisfied with this product, you can more or less after a year, even after a year, you can say you're not satisfied with this product and they'll offer you a full refund. And people like this simplicity. So I think that's maybe um, a hurdle for people using an open marketplace. But otherwise, I think Open Bazaar is a, is a fantastic idea. Like, that there are more applications, more software that are using um, or allowing users to pay with cryptocurrency or accept a cryptocurrency as a payment. I think that's fantastic and um, as a second-hand marketplace. But it's going to be difficult to, to get users to switch from platforms such as Amazon or eBay and uh, select a platform like uh, OpenBazaar. So, yeah. That was my review of uh, Open Bazaar. If you want to try it out, I'll link it down below. And uh, I might try and buy something um, sometime and see if, if it actually works. And uh, the whole process behind buying on, on Open Bazaar, but i um, still not sure about that. If you've got any questions, if you want to try it out, then feel free to try it out. And if you've got any suggestions on what kind of products you'd like me to review, then add them in the description below. It helps me out a lot if I know what you want to watch. And uh, without further ado, I wish you a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.